In this video, we'll discuss rules, terminology, and notation for antiderivatives, and then we'll do several examples. So first, let's define the word antiderivative. The function capital F of x is an antiderivative of little f of x if capital F prime equals f. So for example, 1 3rd x cubed plus 18 is an antiderivative of x squared because when I take the derivative of the capital F function, I get the little f function. The notation for antiderivatives is something called the indefinite integral. So we take the function that we want to take the antiderivative of, and we sandwich it in between this skinny s shape and a dx. And this represents the general form of the antiderivative of f of x with respect to x. And I'll explain what I mean by general form in just a minute. So what is the antiderivative of 4x cubed? Well, imagine it this way. It's like you're playing Jeopardy. I'm giving you the answer. I'm telling you that the derivative is 4x cubed. And what I want to know is the question. What was the original function that gave me that as the answer? Well, there are several possible solutions here. x to the fourth certainly has a derivative of 4x cubed, but so does x to the fourth plus 100, or x to the fourth minus 37, and so on. In fact, x to the fourth plus or minus any constant would give us a derivative of 4x cubed. So we say that the general form of the antiderivative of 4x cubed is x to the fourth plus c, where c is an arbitrary constant. So c might be zero, in other words, there might not really be a c there at all, or it might be some positive number, or it could even be some negative number. And so the way that we would write this is that the indefinite integral of 4x cubed with respect to x is x to the fourth plus c. So just like we have rules for derivatives, we have corresponding rules for antiderivatives. The derivative of x to the n is n times x to the n minus 1. So remember that we bring down the power, and then we subtract 1 from the power. So the power rule for antiderivatives, as you might expect, is the opposite. We add 1 to our original power, and then we divide by that new power. And then don't forget to include your plus c. Similarly, the derivative of the natural log of x is 1 over x, so the antiderivative of 1 over x is the natural log of x, plus c. The derivative of e to the x is e to the x, so the antiderivative of e to the x is e to the x, plus c. We had constant multiple and sum and difference rules for derivatives, and so we have com corresponding rules for antiderivatives. Okay, let's work through some examples. If we want to take the antiderivative of x to the sixth, we need to use our reverse power rule. So the reverse of our derivative power rule is that we take our original power and add 1, and then we divide by that new power. So the antiderivative of x to the sixth is x to the sixth plus 1 divided by 6 plus 1 plus c, and then we can simplify this to be 1 7th x to the 7th plus c. That's it. Here's another example, the square root of x. Well, we don't have a square root rule, but as you remember from when we took derivatives, we can rewrite that square root as x to the 1 half, and now we see that we can use our reverse power rule again. So we take that 1 half and we add 1 to it, so 1 half plus 1, and then we divide by that new power, 1 half plus 1. And by the way, if you can do 1 half plus 1 in your head, you can go ahead and do that. I'm just using the details here to show you where I'm getting this from. So 1 half plus 1 is 3 halves. And then when I divide by 3 halves, I get 2 thirds. And so my answer is 2 thirds x to the 3 halves plus c. This time we have 1 over x cubed. We want the antiderivative. Now, again, we don't have a quotient rule for antiderivatives. We might have one eventually, but we don't have one right now. So again, the way that we would do this with derivatives is we would rewrite it first. We would rewrite this fraction as x to the minus 3, and then we use our power rule again. We add 1 to negative 3, we get negative 2, and then we divide by that new power. And then we can simplify this just a little bit, write that as negative 1 half x to the minus 2 plus c, and we're done. All right, what about e to the 5x? Well, earlier we saw a rule that said that the antiderivative of e to the x is e to the x plus c. So if we were just going to guess, we might guess that maybe this answer is just going to be e to the 5x plus c. Well, the nice thing about antiderivatives is that we can always check our answer. So if we wanted to check whether this was actually right, we would simply take the derivative of the antiderivative that we found, and we would ask ourselves if we got the original function that we started with. But unfortunately, when we take the derivative of e to the 5x, we need to use the chain rule. The derivative of e to the 5x is e to the 5x times 5, 
the derivative of c is 0, but we don't quite get what we wanted. We get 5e to the 5x, and our original function was just e to the 5x. So how do we fix it? Well, we can fix it, so we know this is wrong, but we can fix our answer by multiplying it by 1 fifth because we got an extra factor of 5 from the chain rule, and so we can get rid of that extra factor of 5 by including a factor of 1 fifth. So let's check that answer. So the derivative of 1 fifth e to the 5x plus c. We still need our chain rule, but this time the 5 and the 1 fifth cancel out, and we just get e to the 5x, just like we wanted. So that means that this really is the correct answer. All right, what about this example? Well, here we've got a big ugly fraction, and again, we don't have any kind of quotient rule for antiderivatives, but what we can do is break this up into several separate fractions. This is 2x squared divided by x minus 7x divided by x plus 3 divided by x. Now that might not look better quite yet, but remember that we had a sum and difference rule for antiderivatives, which tells us that we can break this up into several separate problems. So 2x squared divided by x minus 7x divided by x plus 3 over x. Now for each of these, I'm going to rewrite the function that I'm taking the antiderivative of before thinking about the antiderivative. So 2x squared divided by x, that's just 2x. 7x over x, that's just 7. And 3 over x, I'm going to write that as 3 times 1 over x. And you'll see why I did that in just a second. Okay, now we can start taking some antiderivatives. Antiderivative of 2x, well, we can think of that as 2 times x to the first power. And the antiderivative there will be x squared. The antiderivative of 7 is 7x. And the antiderivative of 3 times 1 over x is simply going to be 3 times the natural log of x. Now, for each of these separate integrals, I got a constant. But since those constants are completely arbitrary, I can just add all three of them together into one big arbitrary constant. And so I'll just put a big plus c at the end of that. And we're done.